Um, so as I said, I'm Dr. Smith, the Assistant Dean of Field Education. This is Field Orientation. How many of you are currently in field? You're going, so how many of you are going into field for summer? Okay, perfect, then you need to be here because you need this information. Um, I am actually not going to start us out. Professor Langford is. He's going to talk about uh, preparing for field, time management, self-care. So I'm going to pass it over to him. Sure, sure. sure. But yeah, I'm Jim Langford um, on the uh, sort of the practice staff, assistant professor in practice, and I enjoy teaching it and was, was a practitioner for many years and still have a small practice myself. But uh, uh, my role is just to kind of get uh, to talk a little bit about just how this fits in with the scope of social work. We are required, um, and this is, you're not gonna be tested over this later tonight, so you don't have to worry about a pop quiz, uh, but uh, that was a joke, but uh, sorry, it just kind of flew right over you. I know it's late in the day. Um, but these core competencies, this is what, when we are accredited, which we have been accredited for years and years and years, and we'll be up for accreditation in another three years or so, this is what they judge us on professional identity, ethics, critical thinking, diversity, yada, yada. This is the, what they, the criteria, this is the rubric that they judge us on. All programs of social work are judged on this criteria. So, and, and so I think it's helpful to, to bear this in mind that when they look at the, the field program, they're gonna be looking at how we fit in with, with these, these. And I, I kind of put in purple sort of my take on this um, how I kind of interpret this. As I was reflecting on it, um, I was thinking that um, really what it's about is to make sure we practice ethically. We're an ethics sort of driven um, profession and you've had it in all your classes. Um, so why shouldn't field reflect ethics? Because it's, it's again, it, it is who we are, is our ethical practice. And so I was, I pulled up our core values and I was just thinking, um, our core values, I'm sure you could say this uh, by memory, I'm not gonna ask you to quote it, but uh, service, social justice, dignity and worth of persons, the importance of relationships, integrity and competence. I think that kind of fits. If you go into a practice, you go into a field placement, Using the knowledge, the skills that you have already, the values that you have already, um, you go into it being sensitive to justice issues. You're going to be working possibly with at-risk populations, uh, populations that need to be empowered. You know that word. Um, we're, we're, we're a strengths-based approach. You know that. You've been in the social work classes. So if you're, you're practicing in the field with this, with this sensitivity to justice, then you're, you're fitting this criteria. Uh, dignity and worth of persons, to me, you, it's called respect. And, and it's all about you respecting those that you come into contact with at, at your field placement, them respecting you. Now your clients might not respect you, but, but, your, uh, but your field folks will be respecting you as, um, as student professionals. I mean, you're out there to learn. So again, I think it's important to treat our clients certainly with dignity and, and worth. Importance of relationship, I was just thinking about how, how we kind of work with you in, in skills and building relationship. Um, how important it is to learn how to develop relationship because we're change agents. And the better we are at, at building relationships, I think the more effective we are as practitioners, as social workers. Uh, integrity, which to me, that's, that boils down to being honest and being truthful in your placement. And lastly, competence. It's about learning the job, learning how to be practitioners out in the field. So again, I think ethics, the, our, our values really fits this nicely. Um, I will just cite one uh, professional identity um, because you really are gonna be a social worker when you go out there. Uh, you may not being, you're not being paid as a social worker. Um, not yet, it will come. Yay, you're gonna get money for this, folks. I trust me, you're gonna get some money for this. But, but professional identity simply means, and, and Dr. Smith is going to, Dr. Smith is going to um, remind you of this as well. Dress the part. You, uh, you know, look a social worker, talk social work, uh, be respectful with those that you talk to. Um, that's so important that you, when you represent yourself as a social worker, you're representing me your UTA community and all social workers. And so I know you know this already, but it's important to kind of bear in mind that you, uh, you treat your clients as, as a professional, not as a friend. 
And I've heard people say, you can be friendly, but not a friend. We know that. We know that about, we know that about ethics. Lastly, I would say engage, assess, intervene, and evaluate. I know you've heard that. That's the mantra of practice, but that's the kind of thing you'll be doing out in the field, is you'll be learning how to do this under supervision. You'll have supervisors um, who may have their own style of intervention, or they may give you freedom to practice uh, intervention styles or models that you really prefer. So I think this is uh, so important to keep that in mind. So I think it's, it's helpful to be reminded of our ethics, our, the ethical background we have, as well as um, um, sort of the, the core um, uh, values that we have as social workers. The other reason why I'm on the menu for tonight is I want to remind you, there's, there's a couple of slides that we include here, um, and I'm just going to cite this slide here uh, about time. Um, so it's really kind of about time management and self-care. Uh, I just think to make this a success for you and whoever you love and care for, you're going to have to be intentional and proactive. Don't leave it to chance. Um, and yes, it's this really this slide here, if you open up that link, it breaks it down by the hours. It asks you to list hours for the week and then, and then how much you need to invest in yourself, in your friends, in your family, in all your responsibilities. And it asks you to break it down and compare that to the hours that you're gonna put into your field placement site. So it really is about time management. But I, my point is, and the reason why I include this information is that you do try to anticipate what you're up against. Um, I, I told uh, one group that fortunately when I went, I did a block, I mean I did it all in one semester. And that was because my wife was working, okay? I had a, a relationship that had uh, money coming in and I was able to get a part-time job working third, third shifts. It weren't easy, but we made it happen. And, but, but the important thing is that we were able to anticipate that and work it into our lives for four months or so. So I think it's just being proactive means you, you, whether you add up all the hours and do what we've recommending here, and then I've added another freebie. Okay, we're not going to charge you for this. Um, um, this is a this is this is on me. Okay, um, another attempt at humor just went right over. Uh, so I may have to scratch that from the script. Got one got one laugh. Okay, um, but self care, folks. I trust that you're already involving yourself in a bit of self care, but this is just to give you a variety of uh, a plethora. I love that word, don't you? A plethora of ideas for how to practice self care. Simple as it may sound, sometimes we don't even, we overlook things that are the obvious. And I think it breaks it down very nicely. Um, and it breaks it down by the amount of time to spend on it. So, so come up with a few ideas, plan ahead. Physical exercise is not all we're talking about, but, but taking sh short vacations, um, going to an occasional movie. Um, so there's a number of simple things that, that don't require a lot of time um, that I would encourage you to sort of um, plan ahead, plan with your family, your partners, whoever you're with, and make that a part of your life as you anticipate getting into field. Um, I really don't think you'll be sorry if you're more mindful, planful, proactive in doing it. So, any questions? None. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I need to mute this. Oh, you need this. Yes. We're working on our transition. Yes. Are you, yes, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you since we're recording, if you have questions as I go through, let me go completely through the presentation and then at the end I'll answer all your questions. You've got slot copies of the slides in front of you so you can make notes where you need to or put your questions there, okay? The same for you all on Zoom, make sure that you, you can type in the chat your questions and I'll go through at the very end and I'll answer all of your questions and I'll also give you an opportunity to ask questions via, uh, out loud also. Okay, so field. It's all, uh, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where it goes down. It's getting ready to get real. Okay, y'all gonna have to engage. Give me something. All right, first things first, you need to know who's in the field office. Right now, Ms. Williams uh, just started in December. She is the administrative assistant in the field office. Be nice to her. 
She is probably the first person that many of you will encounter as you're going through field when you have questions about applications, uh, questions about uh, even going into your agency, things like that. She's going to be one of your resources that you'll need. So be nice. Uh, you know who I am already, but you also have Natalie Mangum. How many of you are foundation students? Means you have to do, okay, this right now is your field advisor, okay? If you have questions about your match, your placement, your this, your that, anything pre-placement, she's going to be the person that you're going to talk to. How many of you are advanced? If you are advanced, I am your field advisor right now, temporarily, momentarily, will not happen too much longer. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, if you have questions pre-going into field, you can contact me. You can email me. As you can see, there's one, two, three. That's it. We have 951 agencies, and we have lots of y'all. We want to be as receptive as we possibly can, but you've got to be patient with us because there's just three, and we're trying to answer each and every one of you as quickly as we can, as well as make sure the spring people that are placed and good to go. And also, you should have received an email that the summer field application is open. So you should have, if you're going into summer, if you haven't applied, you may want to do that today. I will tell you that the sooner you apply, the more likely you are to get in the placement that you want. Uh, and I'll talk more about application uh, later. If you have, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah, if you have a disability, it's important for you to register with the Office for Students with Disabilities. Uh, one of the reasons that I bring this up is because if you currently have accommodations for the classroom, those accommodations don't exactly translate in field. So, for instance, if you, one of your accommodations is to be able to turn in your work late, you're not going to be able to necessarily do that in field because if you're at a hospital placement and you need to make sure those notes are done before that patient is discharged, you've got to get it done before you leave, right? So it's important that you all let us know, the field office know, at least the semester before or just as you're applying. Let us know so that we can work with you and the agency that you're going to go to and also the Office of Student with Disabilities to make sure that you have a successful placement, okay? Another thing, background checks and drug screenings. Probably uh, just about every agency, 98% of them require both. Um, so be prepared. Uh, some of our agencies do take care of the cost and you actually you go with them in order to, uh, with their HR to complete these things, but some of them don't. And so that means it's an out-of-pocket expense. Now, if you are an on-campus student, you have access to the UTA Health Services. You should. You can have your drug screening done there. If you go onto our website, I'm going to show you all where that is because I'm amazed at how many students have no idea that Field has a website. If you go on our website, it also gives you uh, places that you can go to have your background check done. If you're sitting here and you're like, I have something on there, please tell me. Because, again, uh, I need to know so that we can work with the agencies that have second chances or that work with people that are maybe have uh, past history with things. So make sure, make sure that you're in contact with the field office early because, again, we need to make sure that we can get you placed. Okay. Everything happens in your Mavs email, not your work email, not your Gmail, not your Yahoo, not your Hotmail, not your Twitter, your Insta Snap, and all, whatever else you got. Really? Nothing. Nothing. Instasnap? I don't know what it's, what is it called? Thank you. Yes. Now I'm teasing. I know what Instagram is just because my son. But your Snapchat, none of those places will we email you. I don't even know if you can get an email on Instagram or Snapchat because I'm not that, that, that technically savvy. Uh, but we will send you your email. We will send you emails to your, to your Mavs account. Everything that we do, we send through this Mavs account because it gives us a record of what we've communicated to you. For instance, today you all received an email that says Summerfield application is open. You're going to get that email probably about 45 more times before we close the application. Do not, do not come to my office on April 12th when the application closed and, and say, Dr. Smith, I didn't know. I'm going to say we sent you an email every day for about 45 days. You're not, you're not going to make it. Go back down and talk to your academic advisor because you need to come up with a new plan. Got it? 
check your MyMavs email account, please. The other thing is, if you email us from one of those accounts, typically I'll tell you to email me from your Mavs email account and I'll CC your Mavs email account. I won't answer you until you email me from your Mavs account. Don't think that I'm being rude or I'm being picky, but again, it's our, it's our record of how we know what we've communicated with you all. Okay. You all have told me what your classification is, so you know this. If you're a foundation student, that means you don't have a bachelor's in social work. If you're an advanced student, you, have an, you either have a bachelor's or you've completed the first round or the first year of coursework. You are going to apply in Sonia. Now, Sonia is brand new. Like, literally, I have been building this and Today, I finished it and was, able to, and was able to send the application out. There's going to be some glitches. Please have patience. I assure you that we will get to you. We will make sure that this application works so far. I think we've had a number of students apply and I have not received any issues, any glitches, anything, something didn't work. But there's a couple things that changed uh, in, with us going into Sonia. One, it used to be when you applied, you would, you would apply and then go get your insurance. Well, now you need to get your insurance at the same time you're applying or right before you apply because you have to upload that insurance into Sonia when you, with your application. You will not be able to submit it without the, the uh, proof of your liability insurance. And I'll tell you about that in just a second. The other thing is you have to have your resume. You would probably want to make sure that your resume is updated uh, because that resume is what the agencies can see whenever you're matched. Make sense? You cannot move forward without the liability insurance and without your resume in your application. It will not let you submit. Those, both of those fields are required. Okay, liability insurance. You need one million, three million. One million per occurrence, three million aggregate. As you're, if you go onto our website, we have a list of, of um, agencies or insurance companies where you can get this insurance. They will know you need one million, three million, or they should. Um, if it is not one million, three million, whenever you up, upload your, your application or submit your application, we will kick it back to you and say, you've got to purchase the right insurance. If we have to kick it back to you, you go back under everybody else so make sure that you know you need one million three million the cost is about twenty six dollars is what I've seen in the in the past semesters okay we have 951 agencies that we are affiliated with I know that sadly because I've had to deal with them all in the last three months uh, dealing with Sonia so uh, of those 951 agencies probably 75 percent are in the Metroplex a great deal of them, but then we also have, uh, because we're all across the state, we have some uh, outside of the Metroplex and then outside of the state, uh, we also have a few. So our goal is always to match you with your preference. If you are an advanced student, we, and you apply, when, once you apply, we typically start with you, louder. Zoom people can't hear me. Better? Much? You can hear me? They can't hear me at all? Let me step back so they can hear me. Okay. Match. Uh, we, with advanced students, our goal is to get you to your number one preference because you'll have the ability to now give us your top three choices. That's not something that in the past uh, for BSW and foundation students that we necessarily allowed. You could tell us, but we typically placed you, right? But now as foundation and BSW students, we will try to put you with your preferences. However, for advanced students, because you're advanced, you have to go into a placement that aligns with your specialty, right? So naturally, hospitals, mental health facilities, things like that, you're likely, as BSW or foundation students, you might might not be matched to that because I may have a string of advanced students that I need to place there, right? Every single agency that we have, I have to give them a classification. Can they accept BSW students, foundation students? Can they accept aging? 
Make sense? So each and every one of them. So if you pick, let's say you're a BSW, or excuse me, a foundation student, and you pick three hospitals, and I'm like, I can't send you to any of them because I've got advanced students that I need to place there. Don't get upset with me. You're going to come back and see me for your advanced placement, right? I'll try and get you there then, I assure you. Um, okay. If you are matched to a hospital and or a... Uh, mental health clinic or any sort of, anything really in the health realm. You're going to probably need most of these things. You're going to have to have the drug screen and the criminal background check, I've already told you that. You may also need a TB test. You're also going to need a list of your current immu immunize vaccines, which will include, uh, the big ones are M MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella, uh, DTaP, which is diphtheria and tet tetanus, Y'all know. And the other one is varicella. Those are the three that they're really looking for whenever they say they want your vaccine to be updated. You can do a tither, which, will, which is a test to see if you already have the immunity too. So you don't have to go back through the whole series. The other one that they ask for often is hepatitis B. Okay, you, can, you should be able to do a tither for all of them to check to see if you have immunity too. And if you do, you don't need to go through the whole series. However, if you have not done the series or done your vaccines, you're going to have to do them if you want to go into a hospital placement. Uh, you're also going to need proof of completing a CPR course and also your, uh, your driver's license, health insurance. Again, I mentioned if you are a student, an on-campus student, you pay fees, you pay a fee that is associated with the health services. That does count as your health insurance, okay? However, if you're an online student and you don't have that option, uh, you're going to need to make sure that you have health insurance if you're going to a hospital. During flu season, you've got to have proof of having a current flu vaccine as well. You're going into summer, most of you that are in here, so you, may, you won't have to worry about that. Flu season is... October to March, I think is what it is. So you'll be out of that window. All right. So here's how this works. You go into Sonia, you apply, great. You've got everything, your resume, your, your professional liability insurance. It's all well, it's all great, good to go. We review everything. We make sure that if you're an advanced student, you pick the right specialty. If you're a foundation student, you said you were foundation and not advanced or BSW or anything else. Make sure you know your classification. You'll be surprised how many students click the wrong classification, actually go into a placement only for us to find out they were in the wrong placement. So guess what? You just lost all those hours because now you've got to go to the correct placement. Make sure you know what you are. Foundation, advanced, what are you? Children and families, aging. Once we know all of that, we are going to send you an email that says, okay, you've been matched to this agency, and here's the contact info. Contact them within 24 to 48 hours for an interview. The agency is going to get an email that says the exact same thing. This student has been assigned to you. They are going to contact you in 24 to 48 hours. It is your responsibility as a student to contact the agency for your interview. Now, I will be honest, and there are some agencies that are a little bit antsy, antsy, you know, they're a little bit gun ho So they will contact you and say, okay, we're ready to set up the interview because we're gonna interview all of you on X date, okay? So it could go either way, but just know it's your responsibility as a student to contact the agency. If you're accepted, great. The agency will first go in and say, I accept this student. Right behind them, you'll, get, you'll be notified that the agency's accepted you. You're going to go in and accept the placement as well. Now, if for some reason the agency says, no, I don't want this, I'm not going to take this student, they're going to decline you and Sonia, and we're going to start the process all over again to reassign you, and you're going to do, you'll get the email again that says, okay, now you've been assigned here, contact them within 24 to 48 hours. If the placement accepts you, but you declined the placement, I'm going to probably email you and say, why did you decline? There's only two reasons that I will say, okay, let's move you. And this goes across the board, whether you want to transfer or if you decline your placement initially. One is it's a trigger for you. Maybe you have a history of mental health or uh, a history of, you know, maybe you were homeless at some point and we assign you to a homeless shelter. And you're like, okay, this, this is not going to be healthy for me. I understand that. We'll move you immediately. 
The other reason is if there's a family emergency. Let's say you're military, your husband's now, or fiance or whatever has to go uh, to Kentucky, and you're like, well, I got to go to Kentucky because that's where my spouse is going, then we'll, we'll move you as well, okay? Those are the only two. If you have a, uh, also, if you have a family emergency, maybe um, mom or dad is sick, uh, grandparents, because I know some, some people care for their grandparents and things like that, I'll move you in that instance. Maybe they're, they're in California or wherever, then we'll, we'll work with you and move you. Those are really the only two. If you just say, well, I don't want to go there because I thought they were rude, I'm going to say, tough cookie. This is, this is social work, you know? It's, it's, you're gonna deal with people that are rude, people that are nice, people that are loopy, people that are sane. Uh, you're gonna deal with all kinds. So uh, that will, it prob I probably will say, try it out first at least. So, okay, you need a 3.0. Not a 2.999999, all the nines that you can put behind it, no. If you say, but Dr. Smith, I have a 2.99999, and I'm going to say, yeah, but I need a 3.0. You have to have a 3.0 in order to go into field. There's also uh, a list of agent, or excuse me, a list of courses that you need to have completed successfully in order to go into field. And for foundation students, you can see them listed here, and they're listed on the on the PowerPoint on the on the copies that you have as well. Make sure that you've passed all of these courses. If for some reason you go, you, we don't see this, let's say we missed that you, you haven't taken 5306. Um, if, and you're in field, I will tell you, you'll get an email that says you have to come out of field immediately because you haven't passed 5306. Again, now you've lost hours and you've lost time. And depending on when you discover or when we discover that you're not, in, that you're not supposed to be in field, you may also lose your money for the semester because you paid for a course, right? So make sure you know that you passed your courses, where you're supposed to be, all of that good information. Okay, you can do field in two ways. As MSW students, um, the field office does not have a preference on how you do field. This is for you to determine what's best for you and what you have going on in your lives. Jim talked about time, so I put this up here because a lot of, a lot of students ask this question. If I do split, how many hours a week is that? If I do block, how many hours? Well, here's the answer. If you do a split in a long semester, fall or spring, you're gonna be there about 16 hours per week. You're gonna complete field over two consecutive semesters two consecutive semesters. Summer is counted. If you start field in the spring, you're going to finish in the summer. If you start, uh, if you start in the summer, you're going to finish in the, in the fall, right? Summer is a semester. I have so many students who start in the spring and they're like, oh, I'm going to come back in the fall. And I'm like, oh, no, you're not. We got to keep, you got to keep moving, okay? Again, remember the agency is depending on you for those, those set amount of weeks, 32 weeks, um, 30, 24 weeks, however many weeks it is. So make sure that you plan for that. Uh, if you're block, you're going to, oh, one other caveat. If you are a split student and you do go into summer, you're gonna be there about 22 hours because you have less weeks, okay? You've got about 11 to 12 weeks. Whereas in a long semester, you've got 15 to 16 weeks, okay? For block students, you're going to do all 480 hours in one semester. That means you're going to be in the agency about 32 hours a week during a spring or fall semester, and you'll be there 44 hours during the summer, which is more than full time. So if you want to do a block in the summer, please be prepared, especially if you're like, oh, this is the last thing I have to do plus integrative or yeah, plus your integrative course. You need to think about that because you're going to be there more than full time in order to make sure you can get all those hours completed in that one semester. Uh, and again, you're going to complete all 30, all, excuse me, all 480 hours in one semester. Okay. There's two parts to field. One is applying for field. That's what you're going to do in Sonia. The email that you received is only for you to apply to go into field. You have to also register for your field course. So, if you apply for field, but you don't register for the course, you've got a placement, you've got a field instructor, but you don't have a, uh, excuse me, you don't have a field liaison, 
who is your UTA professor on record. So therefore, you can't get a grade because you don't have a class, right? If you register for field but you don't apply, you may be, you have now a professor, but you don't have a placement, right? So make sure you follow both processes. Field application will likely always open before registration happens. Registration for summer and fall will open April 1st. The reason for that, the reason that we open the application early is because we can't wait until April 1st, especially for summer. You've got to be placed sooner than that, right? And the same for, um, for fall. The fall field application will probably open the week before or after spring break. But you'll get an email, okay? Don't, you have to write that down. You'll get an email. Uh, there are two courses that, com make, that complete the, uh, field, um, the entire field process. So if you are a foundation student, you're going to register for 5681 and, 528 and 5281. Now, if you're split and you're going into summer, in the summer you're going to register only for 5681. Now, if you notice that 5681 has field and a seminar component, that means that not only are you going to complete those 240 hours, but you've got a class for three, okay? You can do it online, you can do it face-to-face, -face, but you're gonna do two things. The three hours that you spend in that classroom do not count the, towards, those, excuse me, towards those 240 hours that you're doing at your placement. Does that make sense? Okay. However, the good news is, when you get to 5281, it's just field. There's no seminar. You still have a course, you still have a professor, but you may not have the same amount of work that you had in 5681. So in 5281, it's about what you've, you've already kind of gone through maybe the hard part of learning. Now you're actually working with clients and things like that. Your liaison's more there for an advocate, a mediator, that sort of thing. They will ask you for your learning contract, all those same important documentations that we need in the field office. They're still going to ask you for those, but you're not going to have weekly discussions and things like that. You're going to have that though in 5681. So the other piece to that is you're going to register for 5281 in the fall if you're doing a split. Summer 5681, fall 5281. If you're doing a block you must register for both in the same semester, 5681 and 5281. So in the summer, you're going to register for both courses. That means you have a total of eight credits that you write just for field, okay? So I want you to, to note that because these uh, field for foundation is six for the first half and two credits for the second, okay? A total of eight. Okay, advanced students. If you are an aging advanced student, you need to complete 5311 and 5332 successfully in order to take field. I'm going to skip through the, the different, I'll give you some examples here in a second. If you're a children and family student, you have to complete 5311 and 5362 successfully before you can take field. For CAP students, you need 5312 in order to take field. You only, for CAP, it's just the one, 5312, that's all you need. For health, you need 5311 and 5342. Both pass successfully. And finally, for mental health or, and substance abuse, you need 5311 and 5336. So you need your uh, micro, your advanced micro practice course, and then your DP course in whatever, aging, health. Does that make sense? Now, for foundation students, you're not here yet. Don't worry. You'll get there. Don't worry. The, after you, for foundation student, I can see you were like, what in the world? Okay. If you are a foundation student, I showed you back the, the four, three or four courses that you need. You need to have that done in order to take the first, because you're going to do, do two placements, okay? So you need to have that done to do the first one, okay? After you finish the first one, then you come to this. Then you start coming to your specialty classes. It's in your, do you have a copy of the PowerPoint? Look in there, look in there. I'm, I'm just gonna keep going because we're recording, okay? And I'll tell you, I'll go, I will go back at the end for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
just so I can give you some really quick examples. When you think of, uh, excuse me, when you think about aging, um, you are likely going to be probably at a, a skilled nursing facility. You may be at a hospice uh, facility. Um, you may also be at a hospital working with a particular geriatric population. Just know for aging, you're going to be, you're, it's going to be older adult, elderly, older. Meals on Wheels may be another place that you're at. Uh, for children and families, you're going to be at schools, foster care uh, and adoption agencies, CPS. Um, you're, for children and family students, remember it's intervention of, it's intervention with, I should say. So intervention with the family, intervention with the child, intervention with the child and the family, intervention with this group, it's gonna be intervention. And I keep saying the word intervention because I can guarantee you there will be a children and family student that will come to me and want to go to Millwood and I'm gonna say it's treatment. It's not intervention, okay? For CAP students, um, you can, CAP students can almost go anywhere to any of our agencies because when you think about CAP, you're thinking about policy, you're thinking about program design, program eval, administration. All of our agencies have that in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and so it really just varies for CAP students where you wind up because it depends on if the agency needs a CAP student. A lot of times if an agency is starting a new program, they're like, oh, we need a CAP student because we need help with uh, the, the research or this or that. So you'll, CAP students, you kind of have a, a kind of a broad array of places you could go. And then for health students, um, you're going to be at hospitals, obviously, uh, acute um, rehab facilities. You may also be with hospice uh, because hospice is not always elderly. Sometimes they're younger patients. Um, when you think about uh, health and the difference between kind of health and aging, health is going to, prob is going to focus on the resources for the client kind of as they're leaving, right? Uh, as they're discharged, you're gonna do discharge planning. You're going to help them while they're in the hospital, making sure that they have what they need. But for aging students, your focus is going to be really for that particular client, but you may also intervene with their family. So a good example is if you're at a nursing facility for an aging student, there may be an issue where the, the the actual patient or client wants to leave, but the family says, well, but we can't take care of them at, when they're home. So you may intervene and say, how can we, how can we mediate? How can we come to a compromise, right? Uh, and then mental health and substance abuse. Treatment of client. Treatment of group of clients. Treatment, okay? You're gonna be working in the DSM-5. You're going to actually be uh, shadowing actual, um, uh, sessions. You'll also at some point probably conduct your own one-to-one -one with someone shadowing you. Oftentimes when you're in a mental health placement, you usually don't ever get to go out on your own. You may get to lead a case management session or a session with a client, but there will probably be that your field instructor in the room with you or a task supervisor to make sure that you're doing the right thing, okay? Uh, you could go, again, a prefer places, Millwood, Meza Springs. Um, we're affiliated probably with a great deal of the mental health clinics in this area, or mental health facilities in this area. Okay, for advanced students, your courses that you're going to look for are 5482 and 5483. And it's the exact same concept as block versus split. If you are split, you're going to register for 5482 in the summer or whichever your first semester is, uh, and then 5483 in the next semester. If you're block, you need to register for both courses in the same semester, right? And it's still eight hours. Okay, you've been matched. You've called. The agency's like, come see us on Tuesday at 3 o'clock. You're not going to be dressed like Dr. Smith because she has on jeans and a UTA shirt. You're going to have on probably business casual attire. You may not have on a full suit, but you definitely don't want to go in in your jeans and tennis shoes and et cetera, et cetera. Also, uh, you should have a copy of your resume when you go in. And if you have a cover letter, you should have that as well. This is an interview. This is not a, okay, I'm just going to walk in and they're just going to take me. No, you need to be prepared. You need to practice interview questions. You also need to be prepared for what type of interview you may walk into. Uh, 
Our agencies do it all kinds of ways. Some of them do panels where it's one of you and three of them. Some of them do, there's a panel, but it's three students and one of them, or it's three students and three of them. It comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes, and so please be prepared uh, whenever it comes to that. Uh, I talked about practicing your interview skills. Think about your behavioral skills and things like that because that's one of the questions that they typically ask. One of the other things, and this is a pet peeve of mine, so, so I always say this. When you walk into your agency for the first time, do you walk in and say, hi, Donette, it's nice to meet you? Or is it, hello, Ms. Smith, it's nice to meet you? Thank you. Please do not walk in an agency and use their first name. You don't know them. And if you do know them, you're in a different role at this point. So please use that. Now, many of the agencies will say, please, you, you can call me Donetta. Uh, and that's fine if they tell you that. But your initial meeting with them, you need to use the proper, the proper form to do that. The other thing that drives me nuts is a lot of times students will email me and you'll say, dear Donetta. And I'm like, you don't know me. You should not call me Donetta. You should call me Miss Smith, Dr. Smith. I could care less about the credentials. It's just the point. I need you to be thinking about using that. And I'll correct you if you say, if you email me and say Donetta, I'm going to say I prefer to be called Dr. Smith. And I'm telling you that, again, because when you go into field, this is field. This is an interview. This is the real thing. It's, you need to practice those skills. Okay, I won't. I won't belabor there, but I, will, I do want to show you all some documents that you're going to need to be familiar with as you're in field. Okay, I told you that field has a website. How, how many of you have actually gone here to our website? Okay, when you're there, and since now you know where to go, because the website, the, you can see it, it's small, but you can see the, the, the website and how to get there now. When you're there, go into the forms and documents, sorry, go into the forms and documents screen or tab so that you can see uh, the different documents that you're going to deal with. I'm gonna start with learning contract. Foundation students, we have a learning contract specific for you. You're going to use that learning contract. You should complete your learning contract with your field instructor probably within the first week of you being there. You should not complete your field, con excuse me, your learning contract, excuse me. You should not complete your learning contract by yourself. Your field instructor should not say, here, go have a, good, a great time. No, you have no idea what you're getting ready to do for the next 16 weeks. That's the purpose of the learning contract. How can you say, I'm going to do this, this, and this? You have no clue. Your field instructor should sit down with you and complete this. Some of your field instructors already have a template completed, and they'll say, just copy it. That's fine, because you're likely doing the same thing that the students prior to you did anyway. You can do that. But do not attempt to sit down and write a learning contract on your own, because you don't know what you're going to do, okay? For advanced students, make sure that you complete the correct learning contract. Aging, community, uh, excuse me, CAP, Children and Families Health, Mental Health, you all have a learning contract. The, the reason for that is because each one of you have, has different objectives based on what your specialty is. So for instance, a children and family, excuse me, a children and families learning contract is not going to talk about you being in the DSM-5, right? So if you complete the wrong learning contract, you're going to have to go back and redo it. So make sure that you complete the correct learning contract. The other thing that's in there are timesheets. Now, agencies do timesheets in different ways. Some of them want you to use their timesheet. Others of them are like, just use the one that UTA provided. If you use ours, I would suggest that you use the Excel spreadsheet because it, ca it tap calculates the hours for you as you, imp as you put your entries in, okay? If you use the Word document, you can type it in, but it's not going to add it up for you, okay? Uh, and the other, the other thing is, if you use the Excel spreadsheet, you're more likely to keep up with it each time versus when you're writing it out. Because a lot of times when, when students use the Word document, they write them. Uh, and so you wanna, you're going to want to keep up with those hours because your field instructor and your liaison may say, hey, send me your timesheet so that they can make sure that you're on track. Okay? Make sure you're keeping up with your hours because I don't want it to come to the end of the semester and you think you've completed 238 hours and your field instructor says you've only done 220 and you've got two days to make up 20 hours, okay? Again, 
your, your liaison should be asking you to look at it, so they should kind of tell you, hey, you might be a little bit behind, you might want to pick up a few hours, um, but you also should know that. And then the other thing that's, that's also listed is your, your weekly supervision log. Every week that you have your one hour supervision, and I'm going to talk about this with your field instructor, you need to complete this log. And the log is very simple. It just asks you, what did you discuss? What's going to happen next? And what do we need to talk about further? So, I mean, keep it simple. You can give me, you can give bullets. You don't have to write us, don't write us a story. Don't write us a story every week. Don't give us a full paragraph. Give us bullets. You know, did a con we went to a conference. We had a health fair. We did this. We did this. Great. Next week, I have these four things or these five things I'm going to be working on, and I had an ethical dilemma because a client ran out of the building. Great. Okay? Keep it simple. Make sure you sign and your field instructor sign, signs. If you sign but your field instructor doesn't, doesn't sign, I'm going to send it back to you and say you've got to go back to your field instructor and ask them to sign it. Okay? Make sure both people have signed it. Okay, let me go back. Okay, the last thing is the end of term paperwork checklist. At the end of the semester, all of these things, your learning contract, your timesheets, and your supervision logs, you're going to give us the originals of all of them. Keep them. Okay? We need the originals, not the copy of. Give us the original. You make yourself a copy so that you have it. But send, you're going to send in these, uh, these uh, items. So make sure your learning contract is signed by both parties, both you and your uh, field instructor. Your liaison will sign it when you turn it in, right? Uh, your timesheet is also signed by you and your field instructor and your weekly supervision logs. Okay, there are some other documents that I want to briefly discuss because we're not going to ever use any of these, but I want you to know that they're there in the event that you do. One is an interruption of field. That means you've been terminated. Your agency has said they can't come back for whatever reason. They can do that. Hence why I want you to take this seriously, because I don't want you to be terminated. If your agency terminates your placement, you will have to go before professional standards, which is a committee of faculty, and they will determine what happens next. They may say, hey, they can go to the, send them to another placement. They may say, nope, they're out. They may say, you've got to hold off and take field after you do these five things. There's a plethora of, of options that they have, okay? Please do not have your placement interrupted. There's also a request to transfer. Again, if there's an emergency, there's two reasons, family emergency and or, um, really, Donetta? Well, thank you. Those are the two, only two reasons that I'll move you from your placement or transfer you. There's a withdrawal. The field office does not have a preference on if you withdraw or not. You don't have to ask us necessarily permission to withdraw. This form is really more for you to let your placement know and the field office know that you are going to withdraw from the course, okay? You don't need permission from, from me in order to do that. However, before you withdraw, talk to your field instructor and see, can we work something out? It may be, maybe you're behind hours because you got sick. And so there may be some things, that, some extra duties they can give you to work on from home. So before you withdraw, try all your options and then if you need to, there's a form for that. And then the final thing up there is a student performance agreement. It's really a corrective action plan. We call it a SPA because we, you know, like to keep it frilly. But a uh, student performance agreement basically says, here's the issue that we have, here's what we, here's what we as the agency or the field instructor want to see, and here's the timeline. Typically we tell them to give you two weeks to, to fix it. If in those two weeks it's not done, the next thing, depending on what the offense is, might be an interruption, okay? Okay, as a student, these are your responsibilities. First and foremost, foremost, as Jim mentioned, to follow the code of ethics, it's important that you do. Now, you're gonna be in your agencies and you're going to see some things that may not follow the code of ethics. Please do not tell the agency. You're doing it wrong. Please don't say that to them. I assure you they will email me and say, this we do not want this student back. If you see something and you're like, why do they do that? Or, 
hmm, that's not what it says in the book. You have one hour weekly supervision. Use that time to talk about it. If it's something that's like, oh my gosh, they just threw somebody out on the curb or something crazy, then naturally, first of all, please uh, make sure you're safe. But then secondly, please let the field office know because we don't want you there seeing things that are done wrong. But I don't want you to walk in and think that you can tell the agency how they should conduct their business also, right? Um, the other thing is for you to re accept supervision and receive feedback. You're not going to know it all walking in. OK, they're going to give you some great feedback. They're going to give you some, hey, let's try to improve here feedback. Be receptive. Don't get an attitude. Don't be like, they don't know what they're talking about. They do. And they do because you just had that attitude. See there? Uh, the other thing is you need to consult first with your field instructor. If you have an issue at the agency, even if it's with your field instructor, again, we're all adults. You guys are going to be working professionals. You need to learn how to have that, that talk in regards to conflict, right? If there's an issue within the agency, let's say you have a, an issue or there's something that happens with the director of the agency, still go to your field instructor first and alert them to let them know. But the next person that you can talk to is your liaison, which is your UTA, excuse me, professor uh, on record here. That person is your ally. They are your advocate, your mediator, your professor, your everything but your social worker. They can help you, okay? Anytime you have an issue with your, uh, with your field instructor or in your agency, even if you don't need assistance, it's still good just to let them know. Uh, we had this little issue. I did talk to my field instructor and everything is okay. Just send them an email to let them know. And make sure that you're completing uh, and that you've completed all of the, um, the, nece the necessary documents, your learning contract, your timesheet, supervision logs, all of those things, and that you get them to your liaison. So you deal with many different people whenever you're in field. You deal with a field instructor, the person at the agency that's supervising you. Uh, and their role, of course, is to help you to develop into a professional. Uh, but they're also there to, um, to evaluate you. Let me, let me go there. They're going to evaluate you twice. They're going to evaluate, you, eva evaluate you at midterm and then at the final, OK? If you are a split student, you will have four evaluations, right? Midterm, final, midterm, final for each semester, okay? Uh, they um, also are to provide you one hour of supervision. Now, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna say this and you're gonna have all variations, but I need you to make sure that you see your field instructor every week for one hour. Some of you may say, okay, we're gonna meet every Tuesday from two to three. Perfect, great, that's one hour. You may have other field instructors that say, okay, we're going to meet every Tuesday from 2 to 2.30, and then I'm going to see you on Thursday and Friday for about 15 minutes, and we're going to talk over whatever, we, whatever you did on those days. And that's fine, too. You've still gotten an hour, right? Uh, you may have joint supervision, which means there's five of you as interns there. You're all going to do, the field instructor is going to sit you all down for one hour every week, and you're going to do, um, you're going to do your weekly supervision. However, if you have an issue and you need one-to-one -one supervision for a reason, your field instructor should make that available as well. And if they don't, then please let us know that they have not. That is a requirement. One hour, one-to-one. -one. They can do group-to-one or however, but if you need one-to-one, -one, they have to provide you with that weekly supervision. Okay. The other person that you may be involved with at the agency is a task supervisor. A task supervisor is someone that may not have the credentials to be a field instructor, but let's say you're doing after hours and your field instructor is there eight to five, you may have a task supervisor that's monitoring you in the after hour time. Does that make sense? They're just making sure that your day-to-day -day tasks are happening. Your field instructor is still responsible for everything else. And to know, you may have to come in during the day to meet with your field instructor if they're there eight to five, right? Uh, you also have your field liaison. Again, I've said your field liaison is your, your advocate, your mediator. They are there to assist you. Uh, if you have an issue, let your field liaison know. They can help you. Uh, many of them have been doing this for some time, and so they have even relationships with the field instructors. Um, but they're, they're there to help you. They also will uh, spend some time on, on the phone with you and your field instructor. They'll do that right after the midterm. Um, 
they will uh, make sure that all of your documentation is correct. Um, if you have a seminar component, which is for foundation students, they're going to be the one giving, your, giving you your assignments. Now, as a foundation student, for 5681, the first half of field only, your grade is calculated 70% field, 30% seminar. Okay, so you have both components and that's how you get your grade. We asked your field instructor what is their suggested grade and that's typically the grade that your field liaison will go with. But for those that are in, uh, that have the seminar component, you may, your, your liaison, or excuse me, your field instructor may say, oh, they should get an A, but you didn't do any of the coursework, so you get a C. Okay? Yes. So make sure for foundation students that you follow, keep up with your coursework, because that's important. Advanced students, or when you're in the second half of field as, an, as a uh, foundation student, it does not work that way. You don't have classwork necessarily. So the grade that the field instructor suggests is likely the grade you're going to get, right? Because we haven't, you, we haven't assigned you really anything that's gonna be significant. Your focus is going to be in, in, your, field, in your field placement. Uh, I think I went over all of those other things. Okay. So I've kind of talked about this as I've gone through each of those roles. Your first person that you're going to contact is your field instructor, your liaison, your field advisor, Ms. Mangum. If you go to the first two and you cannot get whatever issue it is resolved, Ms. Mangum is your next person. She hopefully can get it resolved for you, the agency and the liaison. But if she cannot, then she will come to me and she will say, Dr. Smith, I need you to step in here and we need, we need to get this resolved. If it is something that happens at your placement and it is just, I mean, like you walk in and your field instructor and a client are doing, them, doing something they shouldn't be, you can just email me and say, Dr. Smith, I don't think I'm going to go back to my placement because my field instructor and, my, and a client were doing something they shouldn't have been doing. So, and I will understand we'll get you moved. But for the most part, these three individuals should be able to help you first. Okay, I talked about this some already. You're gonna have a midterm and a final evaluation. Um, we send these evaluations directly to your field instructor. But in Blackboard, typically your liaison will say, I just sent the link out for your midterm. Please remind your field instructor of the due date, okay? We usually give about two weeks for them to complete it from the date that we send it. They'll do the same with the final. They'll say, please remind your field instructor to complete the final. If we don't get the, the midterm or final back by the due date, we're going to come to you and say, hey, we need you to get after your field instructor because we don't have this back, okay? We do that because you have just interacted with them for X amount of weeks. They're likely, they may be more likely to respond to you because you're probably going to see them versus us sending them emails because we understand they're busy. Um, but we still need these evaluations and things completed timely so that we can give you your grade. Okay, on our website, which I showed you all, we have a calendar. That calendar has everything from when your learning contract is due, your midterm, your final, when the summer application is going to be open. All of those things are there. Now, if for some reason the semester starts and that calendar is not there, your course is likely not there. That's why the calendar is not there, okay? So, Sometimes field starts, has a little bit of a delay in the course starting. In the event that that happens, I'm not going to post that your learning contract is due in three weeks and you don't get your, your liaison for two, right? Because you, you're going to need more time. So now it just causes confusion for you and the liaisons because you're like, oh no, I got to get my learning contract in here. And anyways, so that's why the dates are posted once your course is up, okay? Also, um, the application, like for summer, it says it was going to open February 11th. Well, unfortunately, today is February 20th, and it is open, but there was a delay. So just be patient with us. We are working as quickly as we can in the field office to make sure everything is streamlined and working as it should. Questions? All right. Let me put this down. Yes, ma'am. Send me, send me an email with your information and I will send it to the person that's over that. Can we just block in the 
you have to get permission from Dr. Mitschke in order to do that. That's the, the MSW program director. She has to give you permission to do that. Mm -hmm. Are there any possible There are. That gets a little, that, it's a little tricky though, because again, you're going to be probably working with the administrator of, the director of. They usually are there eight to five. Mm -hmm. So it may be a little tricky, but I'm sure we can, we can, we can try to figure out something. However, please know that nights and weekends are extremely limited, okay? So you, like the first hour, you need to apply. I have no idea who was next, so we're just gonna go down the line. Yes, sir. Uh, between our field placement location and our field instructor, uh, it'd be nice if we had all worked out to where everyone can work with each other, but uh, who has priority on our time? Let's say our, our field location says, I need you in our office at Monday at 2 p.m. And our field instructor says, well, Monday at 2 p.m. is the only time I have to reach you. Then you, you probably should be there Monday at two o'clock. Um, what I don't know I don't know what you're asking me though. I don't let well, me make sure. So if there's a disagreement on my office, my, my field placement location wants me in their offices at a certain time for my internship, mm -hmm. but my field instructor uh, he or she says that they only have a certain time in the week to meet me. Oh, you're That's asking me if your field liaison wants you, your instructor, so your course? Is that what you're asking me? Be between, yes, my field instructor, whoever I'm meeting for my one hour of supervision mm -hmm. each week, mm -hmm. uh, and, and my actual field internship office, if they're saying they both want me at a certain time. Your field, your field instructor is at the agency. They're at the field placement. Okay. So they should be, t your field instructor should tell you, I need you here at the facility Mondays at 2. That, it's one and the same. Okay. Yes, there, your, yeah, that, your field instructor is the person that's there. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I have a few questions. Okay. okay. So, with this, so when you're doing your hours in general, are they pretty like, because I know like when in the past if you do an internship, you just have to make sure you get the hours done. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily like you need to be in this office, like in the past with other things, at from 8 to 5. It's more of like, okay, you just make sure the hours, make sure the floor is done. <laughs> okay, so my answer to that is this. I don't want you to focus on just getting 480 hours. You're there committing to a semester, 15 weeks, 11 weeks, depending on which semester you're there. I want you to focus on that. And I say that because if you're there the full amount of time and as long as you're going at the hours that you're supposed to, you're going to hit your hours, right? If they say you're coming in every week, let, let's say two days a week for eight hours, you're going to get to your 240 that you need or 480. But if you say, well, I'm going to finish my hours early or whatever the case may be, and you leave two weeks early, you just left all those clients two weeks early as well that you were seeing, right? So I want you not to focus on, it's a minimum of 480 hours. Some people go a little bit over. You cannot have less, but it's a minimum of. But you don't focus on that. Focus on the number of weeks in the semester. You need to plan to be there each and every week that's in that semester. Okay, it's just like with other obligations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes thinking of it like that helps me a little bit more. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to decide whether to do the block or the split, mm -hmm. or whether or not that answers yes or no with respect to that. Okay. Yes. Did I answer your question, kind of, sort of? No. Ask me again. Yeah. So no. No what? Or like what's the answer? Yes? Mm -hmm. what are, ask me your question. Like, are they flexible? Like in the sense like they're not going to say, okay, you need to be here from 8 to 5. Is it more of like accommodating? Like it really depends on the agency. Let me, let, me, let me answer that question that way. It depends on the agency because every agency is different. I have some agencies that say, I need you here two days a week and you can do you know, three hours from home to work on this project. Some agencies say, no, I need you here from eight to five because you're gonna be seeing clients from eight to five, okay? Every single, every single one of them do it, has a different take on how it needs to be done. You need flexibility, probably, does that mean you need nights and weekends? Not necessarily, but the flexibility. You need the flexibility. They'll work with you. Most of the time, they'll work with you. Okay, you had a few questions. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. All so right. What's the reason for people getting kicked out? A reason? Yeah, like okay, let me give you an extreme reason. One is you're in the intern office area and you're waxing your legs. You're going to probably get kicked out. That person did. Uh, another reason uh, would be because you show up late continually, even after a student performance agreement has been agreed upon, you're still coming in late. 
Uh, another reason is just surely you're, uh, maybe you say something or do something wrong with a client. Another reason, uh, and a big one, is uh, you go in and try to tell the agency how they should run their show. Those are the, probably the main. So it's usually extreme, okay. Mm, yeah. Or like just being like basic unprofessional things. Yeah. Okay, and then yes. the last question yes. is, you, so some people do get rejected when they interview. Is mm -hmm. there Probably, yes. Okay. The main, I will say, the main reason that you're, that a student is rejected at the interview is because they can't match the hours. Okay. Does that make sense? So the student's like, well, I can only do these hours, and the agency's like, but I only have these. Okay. That's the main reason. Did I get them all? Yes, those are the big ones. Let me come here. I'm going to just work my way back. Yes, ma'am. Yes. How can you, can you apply for a field when you don't know if you're a good student? Yes, okay. apply for field because I know you don't have a GPA, but you're going to have a GP, you're going to have a GPA in grades before the semester starts. We do an audit right before the semester starts to make sure every student actually is eligible to take field. If we find that you don't have the 3.0 or you haven't completed the courses, we'll let you know and say you need to make sure you withdraw. Okay? But you can go ahead, go ahead and apply. Yes. I in no way do anything on that um, registration or how many hours you can take. That is going to be your academic advisor, okay? So email them to ask them that. Uh, yeah, let me not even try to steer you in the wrong direction. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, just put, yes, currently enrolled. And the great thing about Sonia is this, I can actually see what you're enrolled in. So if you, yeah, put it, put it that you're enrolled there, but I can also see all of the courses that you're enrolled in. Okay, and the other question was like, um, let's say we do like have a misdemeanor on our record from, you know, a few years ago or something, um, you know, young and stupid, like, uh, is that, like, what's the type of stuff that's going to be like, uh, hanging out? Um, a misdemeanor? Probably not. It just depends on where you're going. If you're going someplace like Parkland, they may say no. Um, but if you're going someplace like uh, Catholic Charities, and I'm completely throwing this out, throwing these out, they may say yes. Okay. So it just really depends. So if you do have that issue, please come see me. Okay. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Who did you who did you go through? Was it Allied? A L L I E D? Um, let me say this. Allied, from what I've experienced and what most students have experienced, usually they get it right back. So you don't have to change it to Allied. I'm just for the rest of you who have not purchased, you may want to use Allied. And they're also, I think, probably the cheapest. Um, if you're having to wait, send me an email and say, Dr. Smith, I'm waiting. Let me tell you this, though. We are not going to start placing students until probably next week. Because at the same time that you all are, are applying, the agencies are telling us what they need for the summer. Unfortunately, again, we just built the system. So you didn't get an email prior to saying, hey, the application is going to open this day. Because I didn't know when I was going to get it open. I'm going to be honest with you. So do, just do what you can. Send me an email. Say, hey, Dr. Smith, I'm still waiting to get this. Send it to me, and we'll get you in the queue. Okay? Don't worry. 
you can't use the screenshot of the receipt because it doesn't tell me what your policy limits are. If it tells me that, then you can use it. Does it tell you it's one million, three million? But does it say that on your receipt? Okay, when you look at the receipt, see if it says it. If it says it, upload it. If it doesn't, then no, you gotta wait till you get the policy. You've called the main number and you haven't talked to anyone? Mm -hmm. what, what, will you just wait and I'll, whatever question you have, I'll answer whenever you're done. Are you advanced? No, your foundation? Have you emailed Ms. Mangum as well? Okay, just wait and I'll answer whatever question you have at the end. I'm not sure. Ms. Mangum should be responding and you should be able to get through to us. Ms. Williams is always pretty much at her desk. So for Ms. Mangum, is that what you're asking for? Well, okay, remember at the, at the beginning of this, I told you there's, there's two of us? There's two of us that are acting as advisors. So again, we're working as quickly as we can. Are you in field right now? You're going, you're going in summer because you just did your application. Just see me afterwards so I can answer your questions, whatever they are, okay? Next. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you have to complete, it's called a place, uh, place, place of employment form, okay? You're gonna see that whenever you're going through the application. It's gonna ask you, do you wanna do it at your place of employer? You mark yes, and it should kick you out to say, go to the website and complete the form, complete a POE. You're gonna upload that in, into your application. Now, just know, in order for you to upload that, first of all, you can, you can do that later, okay? You can submit your application without that. Okay, but because there's three different parts, you're going to complete a part, your current employee and current supervisor, and then your proposed field instructor. All three of you need to complete a piece of that form. Okay, and also just know if you're going to do your placement at your place of employer, one, you cannot do your placement in the same unit that you currently work, and two, you need a separate field instructor from your current supervisor. A field instructor needs two things. They need a master's degree. They don't have to be licensed, but they have to have an MSW or BSW, depending on the level of student for you, they have to have an MSW. And they have to have two years of experience post-graduation. Okay, yes, you got, that's the only, those are the two requirements for a field instructor. Yes, sir. Yes, you're going to register through my math. But this is after the You're April 1st. If you're going into field in summer, April 1st is when you can register for summer courses. When you can register, you need to register for field. But you need to apply now for summer field. Does that make sense? Through Sonia. Mm hmm So I see here. Okay. Can I look at this at with you afterwards? Yes. Let me look at it with you after. Okay. Yes, sir. How much freedom does our uh, field location have um, with dynamically changing up our schedule as far as when they want us to come in throughout the week? Uh, can they can they change it up on a set day? Uh, can it be completely different week to week? You you when you go into interview or maybe during orientation once you're accepted, you should talk about your schedule and your schedule should be set for the semester. 
most agencies work that way. They don't switch it up every week. They may switch up where you go. They may say, maybe you go one week and you're on the children's unit, but the next week you're on the adult unit or however. They may do that, but you're, if you're scheduled to be there eight to five Monday and Wednesday, you're gonna be there eight to five Monday and Wednesday. Will it usually be at one site location or can they, uh, if they're working at multiple sites across DFW, can they send you all the way across? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. If you're hospice, you're gonna tr you're gonna drive because you're gonna be going out to see people, right? A lot of times with hospice, they'll let you. You usually ride with your field instructor at times, but yeah, you can you can go anywhere that they may have a location. I'm gonna come back to you. Do you have another question? Oh, well, that was it. I was just uh, I'm just trying to get a new social work job right now, and mm -hmm. I'm having to make sure that I have semi predictable hours. But you know, between the new job that I want to get right now and the internship that I'm going to do, that you know, there's some way to make that both happen. Gotcha. Um, are you going in summer? Are you going to do field in summer? I'd like to. Okay. Um, you, whichever way, okay, you may get the job first before you have your placement, and so you'll have your hours set here. So then when you go to your, for your interview, you can let them know, okay, I can come in, you know, Tuesday and Thursday from 2 to 6 or however that may work out. But you just whichever side gets set first, the opposite side you need to let know. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. So I've taken the new hospice in here as we have the table layers ready for it. Because a lot of us, because we can't do it. So it's like opening up the gift shop. But I can't start feeling my butt, taking it down to the table layers. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Other questions? Yes, ma'am. So what would be um, the interest that you're talking about? Allied, A-L-L-I-E-D. Is it there? No. Uh, okay. There are only two that are, there's only two listed, Austin and Merck Services, and mm -hmm. it's like the only um, American Professional Agency of Toronto Canada, like the American Correctional Institute. Mm -hmm. To go into the website, okay, I'll look at it. I will say we do need to make some updates to our website, I know that. But also please note that I've only been in this role since January 2018. So everything that we're doing, some of these things we're learning, I'm learning with you as I go through this process. So have some patience with us. I assure you, our goal is to make sure you are placed as a student, that you are where you want to be, uh, and that you have a successful experience. We don't want to make this harder than what it is. But again, there's two of us. And the, the, both of us actually started at the same time last year. So you're dealing with two totally new people to a certain degree. So be patient with us. Other questions? Just send me an email and let me know. Say, Dr. Smith, I purchased my insurance, but I have to wait one to three business days. I'll keep your spot in the queue. Just send me an email. I got you. I got you. Can I, can I mention, can I mention yeah. one? The National Association of Social Workers, NASW, everybody knows that. They, they also have an entity that does, that does insurance as well. And yeah, it's, if you're a member of it. It runs at 30, 30 paid dollars or something. So mm -hmm. it's... Uh, yeah, that's another option, too. Yeah. Don't, don't, re, don't redo it if you are done. Just email me and just say, Dr. Smith, I purchased my insurance. Please don't lose, don't take me out of my place in line because there's this issue. I got you. Yes, ma'am. Can you say the name again of the one that you purchased? It's Allied, A-L-L-I-E-D. Could you send out the link for me? Yes, I will go in and look it up, and I will, I will send it the same way that we sent the, the email to tell you that it's time to apply. We'll send it, and we'll put it on our website. Other questions? Okay, yes, ma'am. One last question. Mm -hmm. So when you, like, let's say you do the split, do you have to reapply the next semester, or are you automatically... No. Oh, so all you have to do is just apply for that. Just time. apply one time. If you are split, do not apply twice. You just need to apply once. 
Yes, 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 yes. Other questions? Okay, I'm gonna let the, the folks on Zoom ask questions if they need to. Uh, maybe. Oh, there they are. Okay, for those of you on Zoom, do you all have questions that you would like to answer? If you put your, put your question in the chat, I will respond to it once I'm completely done. I'll send you a response. But if you have questions that you want to ask, go right ahead. Do you want us to ask them to you through here or only in the chat? No, no, no. You can ask them now. You can ask them to me now. Okay, so I applied today. Um, I am a foundation student and I'm applying for summer. I applied today and I was able to get all the way through my application, but in the email it said something about like going to, um, let me look real fast, going to placements and accepting like the join, um, to join the summer whatever program. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple of people I've talked to in the chat have also had the problem where it says that we are not allocated yet. So we can't click that join if that's something we need to worry about. Uh, no, just go ahead and complete the application. But it should, it should allow you to select what you are. Does that make sense? So if you're MSW aging, you should be able to select that and then it'll, it'll drop you into the correct placement group. Yeah, so it does, but then um, it comes up with an option that says leave in details and then it also says that this has not yet been allocated. Is that, don't you worry. need to wait? No, no, just go ahead and keep going through the, just, you should be able to keep push, pushing through the, the application, even with it saying that. What it's telling you is you haven't been allocated to an agency yet. Okay, and so if, if, we, just sub, if we complete our application and we're under the application for the forms tab, it says that it's done, we're done. Yes, as long as you hit submit and it says that you submitted it, you're done. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Other questions? question yes ma'am okay so for the students that started in um january for spring 2019 we're um we're additional students and per my degree plan it says i wouldn't apply for field until summer and i would begin in fall is that correct you're going to start field in the fall is what your degree plan says yes then yes the fall yeah. the fall field application will will open right around uh, spring break. Okay. We'll send an email so you'll know when it's that it's going to open and we'll send you one in advance so that you know that that it's going to open. Okay, thank you. Mhm. Mm Other Ms. questions? Smith, I have yes. A question. Yes, ma'am. So you should probably know a lot of us had trouble with the audio um, on tonight's lecture. And we were wondering if you could send us the PowerPoint that you were presenting and if we could kind of catch up. Yes, I, I sent the PowerPoint to, if you put your email in the chat before I started talking, I sent it, but I can certainly send it to you again. So put your, put your email in the chat and say, I didn't get the, I didn't get the uh, PowerPoint and I'll send it to you. But also we recorded tonight, so you should hopefully be able to view it probably in the next week or so. So you can go back and catch the things that you may have missed. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh-huh. Other questions? Oh, this is kind of a weird question. Okay. But um, how many advanced healthcare students are there? I'm just applying for field right now around. Mm -hmm. You're because asking. I'm a field student and I would really prefer like a healthcare setting, but I don't want to apply. There's like so many students um, applying, and there's not a chance of getting placed in a healthcare setting. Uh, your your you your specialty is health. No, I'm a field student. Right, but what's your? Are you foundation? Oh, are I you? Mean, no, I yeah foundation. Sorry. Your foundation. Field instead of foundation. Okay, let me tell you. As a foundation student, you can preference what you would like to do. Okay, you can tell me where you'd like to go, but if you're in the metroplex, we're going to place you. So you can say I want to go to a healthcare facility. But that health, that health spot is going to probably, if there's a health advanced student in front of you, they're going to go there. So the first foundation placement 
be flexible because you're going to be placed wherever. We're going to try and get you close to your home or close to the address that you used in your application. Your second time, because you're going to have to come back to field, then you can go to your healthcare setting if you don't get it the first time. Does that make sense? Okay. And also for students, for those of you that are on Zoom and you're out of area, one of the things that I want you all to know is it's your responsibility to locate your placement. When you first came into the program, that's one of the things that you, decide, you signed on your degree plan, your degree plan agreement. It says that you're responsible to find your placement. So if you are out of area, you're not in the Metroplex, you're not in DFW, go ahead and start looking for your placement now if you're going to start in the summer. If you are in the Metroplex, if you are in DFW, do not reach out to the agencies now because the agencies are accustomed to us assigning you and then you reaching out to them. When you do the reverse, they're going to say, hey, UTA hasn't told us that you're coming to me. When they assign you here, then I'll talk to you, okay? Make sure for in DFW area students, we assign you, then you reach out. Out of DFW, you're going to go ahead and reach out and then we'll assign you once you've secured it. Okay, other questions? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So I'm outside the DFW area. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm supposed to find my own placement, is that right? Yes, you're going to secure your own placement. Okay. Yes. So do I tell you like what agency uh, I want to do? Yes. Or... Yes, you're going to tell me. You're going to say, Dr. Smith, I'm going to um, Catholic Charities in San Antonio. I completely made that up. And, and once okay. you, as long as it aligns, if you are a, a student in your specialty, if you're an advanced student, make sure your placement aligns with your specialty. Okay, so if you're mental health and you say, Dr. Smith, I want to go to Catholic Charities, I'm going to say, do they have a mental health clinic component? How does that align with your with your specialty? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and the the application, I'm I'm gonna be I'm an advanced student mm -hmm. in the summer 2019. So when when is the application due? Uh, you have until April 11th for summer to complete the application. So also, um, I'm doing split, so do I do the same um, field education for both of them, or is it two different ones? No, you're going to go to the same placement for both halves of your, both halves of your, of your field placement. So you're, if, you're, if you're at Catholic Charities in San Antonio for the first half, you're going to go back there for the second half. Okay, and you have a list for, for people who are outside the VFD meeting. Is that correct? That, you know what? Now that we're in Sonia, if you go into Sonia and you go under the sites tab, you can see every single agency that we're affiliated with and you can filter it by your city. So yes, you can see every single agency okay. and it's up to date. Okay, and that is in your email or where is that at? That's in Sonia. That's where, you, where you're going to go and apply. It's called Sonia is, the, is what the system oh, is called. I see. When, okay. you, when you go there, there's a tab that says sites. You can see every single site that we're affiliated with in there. Okay. Other questions? Ms. Smith? Yes. Um, okay, so my question is that. I'm sorry? Um, can you? Can, that? Say, repeat, I'm sorry. When you spoke, there was something with the speaker. Say it one more time. My question, I put it in the chat. You, oh, you put your question in the chat? Yes. Okay, I will answer your question in the chat. Is that what you want me, is that what you want to do or do you, you can ask me now if you'd like. Okay, I'll just ask you. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put, and I start in the summer. Um, if I finish my first one of hours early, can I start on the next one of the hours or do I have to wait for the if you complete your hours early for the first half of split, you'll need to continue through the semester, but, and you can only roll over 20 hours to the second half of the, of the, of the placement. Um, 
Does that make okay. sense? So if you, let's say you, you hit your 240 uh, and then you say, well, I'm going to do a few extra hours because I still got a couple more weeks, then though the, you can only roll over 20 hours in between the semester. OK, that makes sense. OK, you also have to stop when the last day of finals is the last day that you should be at your placement. You can't go any further than that. And the reason for that is you have to be in a class in order for your insurance to cover you. Does that make sense? So you have to be registered in, a, in the field course in order for your insurance to cover you while you're in your field placement. So that's why you have to take the break in between semesters. OK. OK? Thank you. Uh-huh. Other questions? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So I was wondering if there's only one agency in our location, because we're out of the DFW area, mm -hmm. do we have to find an agency with a contract with UTA, or can we go outside of that? You can go outside of that. Now, if you, if you want to do, utilize an agency that's not affiliated with us, you need to send us their info so that we can start the affiliation process. Just know the affiliation process can take as few as a week, as little as a week, but it can go up to six months, depending on if the agency can sign our agreement or if they have their own and we have to go back and forth between legal teams. So if you're going to go with an agency that is not affiliated with us and you're out of the area, you need to let us know that now so that we can start the affiliation process with that agency. Do we just email you if that's the case? Yes, yes. Just email me with the agency, with the contact person that we need to talk to in order to start the affiliation process. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Other questions? Other Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm sorry. I can't hear you. So basically, I'm applying a placement in the United States, and they said it's the SNI thing with the contact person. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know. There's something maybe in your background. I'm not really sure, but I can't understand what you're saying. Why, why don't you email me? And I'll answer your question. Send it through the chat and I'll answer your question because there's some feedback coming back whenever you're speaking. Okay, I'll talk to you right now. Okay. Okay. Question. Yes, ma'am. So I applied for field for um, this past semester, but I didn't actually uh, go into that field plan to um, personal research. However, I did buy a insurance. Can I? The insurance and rebuy a new one whenever that one expires. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Other questions? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I am an out of state student. I am currently in California. Yes. I have two interviews set up that with two different agencies. What would be in the case if we uh, are willing to take me on as an intern, what would be the next steps for them as an agency to take? You need to send me, whichever agency you decide to go with, send me their contact information so that we can start the affiliation process with that, with that agency. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I was just looking on the actual application for field and my job is actually one of the um, agencies there also work with and possibly get to do my field there in a job. You can do your field placement with your with your place of employer. If you're going to do that, you need to go onto our website and complete the place of employment form. When you complete that form, you're going to do a section. Your current supervisor, employer supervisor, has a section, and your proposed field instructor is going to have a section. Make sure all three pieces are complete, and then send that into the field office, and, I, and we'll get it approved. Okay, and you said that's on the forms? That's under, uh -huh, under the forms and documents tab on our website. And the, the other thing, just so that you're aware, you cannot intern in the same department that you currently work. Right. 
And your current employer supervisor cannot be your field instructor. Okay. Okay. And so I'm an um, actual advanced in, uh, in mental health. Uh -huh. And I just started this semester. So am I supposed to be applying for the April? You're, am I supposed to apply April 11th? When you're going into field when? Well, I'm not sure. I just started. This is my first semester. I'm in the MSW and being standing. Mm -hmm. What's on um, your what? What does it state on your degree plan? It should tell you on your degree plan when you when you should expect to take field. Okay, I'll look at that. Yeah, look. Take a look at that. That'll tell you when you need to apply. You will probably need to apply for fall, if not summer, because for advanced okay. it, it moves pretty quickly. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Other questions? I have a Hi, question. Um, hello? Yes. Sorry if this was already addressed. Um, for those outside of Dallas, um, do we do the field application first or find uh, or reach out and secure the placement? Uh, go ahead and do the field application. You can go, go ahead and do that now. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh-huh. Miss Smith? Yes. Quick question. Um, I don't know if this is a dumb question or not, but if I am living in Houston, am I supplying my own placement or is it through you guys? No. If you're in Houston, you're, you need to secure your own placement. Okay. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, if we secure our own um, placements because we're out of the area, then we just need to email you that and let you know that? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yes. There was a lot of background noise, so it's hard for me to hear some of the answers. That's okay. Yes, you're, you're going to email the field office to let us know where you're going. Okay. Other questions? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um... Okay, so I was looking for uh, a different site in Houston. Uh huh. You know, do any of those offer stipend or yeah? Do any of the sites offer a stipend? Yeah. Uh, there may be some. The agency. Uh, you will likely mark that if they do offer one on their on their application. When you go in there, can you see more info about the about the agency than just their basic info? Um, can you see their profile? No. no. Okay, I'll check on that. I will tell you this though: not many agencies that we have offer a stipend. We probably have a handful that do. So you're, to answer your question, likely no, but there may you may run across one that does. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm I also saw that for the summer, like if you're starting in the summer, you said that we should do at least 22 hours a week. Yes. If you are split, you're going to do 22 hours a week for summer. If you're block, it's 44 hours. Okay. So say if I have a job. I guess you recommend doing like part-time job. I let me say this. I cannot tell you how to work your schedule. Okay, if you work full time, then you're probably not going to be able to do a block because that's full time. Uh, but I, I, I'm not. I can't tell you which way to do what you need to do. But I will tell you this. If you don't complete the number of hours by the end of the semester, it's an automatic fail. It doesn't matter if you're at 239.5, you're going to fail the course because you have to hit the minimum number of hours for the semester. Okay. Okay? So I don't I don't want to tell you how to how to how to adjust how to work your schedule because I, I don't know enough to, to do that. But just know you've got to hit your the minimum hours required. Okay. Okay. Other questions? I have one more question, Ms. Smith. Yes. Um, I noticed that we email you once we um, find our placement. Is that after we've done the interview and secured it, or is that just when we pick the placement from the
the list that we're choosing from. No, why don't send me that after you've secured it because you're going to go ahead and reach out to them and interview. As soon as you, you, once you go through and you look through our list and you say, oh, I want to go here, then go ahead and call and set up the interview. They, the, the agencies that are not in this area, they, they know that you're going to reach out to them before they're, you're actually assigned to them. Okay. Okay? Okay. Yes. Other I questions? I have a question going off of um, the question about kind of like setting up your schedule. I know as mentioned beforehand that you said if you need like nights and weekends, like go ahead and apply as quickly as possible. But in the application, there's not an area for us to list where we wanted or like what we were available for. Um, so does that come later after our application is submitted? No, there, there should be a question in there that asked you if you need nights or weekends. It didn't ask it. It didn't ask that? Okay, I'll go back and look. But if you if if it didn't ask that and you do need it, then just email us and we'll we'll take a look and try to get you placed. Okay. Thank okay. You. Mm hmm mm hmm Other questions? Question. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, so for people in Houston, um looking at the list, um okay, so even though we're going to tell you what we would like to do, you still want us to contact these people at home. I'm sorry, say that again. You would want us to contact the um, agencies on our own? Yes. If you're outside of, DF, of the DFW area, yes, you're going to contact the agency on, you're going to go ahead and contact the agency and set up your interview. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Other questions? Question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm doing Summerfield, and um, I'm in the Waco area, and Waco ISD is on there, but sometimes Summer, would that not work as a placement because it's an ISD? Yeah. Like, I don't know if they do Summer School or whatever. Uh, I will say most of the ISDs and most of the schools do not take interns in the summer because the students aren't there. And even if they do summer school, the students aren't there long enough to make it through the whole semester because summer school is usually just the month of June and you still got okay. July and August. So yeah, most of the ISDs do not take, do not take interns in the summer. Okay, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Um, yes, I have one. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I was thinking about doing my internship at my employment, but uh, I'm doing mental health and substance abuse, and my employment is adoption agency. Would that not work out? No, because your okay. plate, your field placement has to align with your specialty. Okay. So no, that won't. It won't work. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Other questions. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you were talking about the ISDs that they um, will not take you start if you're doing a, your field placement in the summer. Um, when we go to do our next field placement and we do a split, it would be broken between spring and summer, right? Uh, is that what it says on your degree plan? Yes, if we choose to do the split, that it would be between spring and summer. So I was just curious if summer is involved at all, that they won't they won't take you. They only take like the block if you're doing it in fall or spring in the ISDs. If if you the only way that you can do a split with an ISD is if you do fall spring split. Okay. Okay. Any okay. if you're if you're gonna do anything in summer and ISD communities and schools anything like that they're not gonna take you because they don't have any they don't have students. Okay, okay. I understand. Thank you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Other questions? Yeah, I have one. Yes, ma'am. So uh, I'm mental health and substance abuse. So can I do a counseling agency? Uh, is it a private practice? Like, I think I found one and it does like for like substance abuse and then it's also for like other like counseling. I don't know. I mean, okay. it's part substance abuse part of it too. Okay. Do this. Okay. Why don't you send me their website? Are they, are they affiliated with us already? 
Well, I haven't really checked that that yet, but it's called the intersection of research and practice. Okay, do this, because I can't look it up right now, so send it to me, email it to me so I can take a look and I'll let you know if it'll work. Okay. Okay? Sure. Perfect. Thank you. Uh-huh. Other questions? I have one last question. Yes, ma'am. Um, our children and family specialty mm -hmm. are, we looked at the PowerPoint, but I just have to ask, um, are hospitals a, a complete no-go? For the most part, yes. Every once in a blue moon, there's a hospital that does like um, chronic, chronic um, illness classes or things like that. And that a children and family student could do. But in order, but not like discharge planning actually on the unit and things like that. No, not a children and family student, only health students. Okay. Other questions? Sorry, I just have one more question. Yes, ma'am. Um, when purchasing the liability insurance, the coverage date, do you want it to be immediately or you want it to start in June when we start actually in our field places? You can post date it. Yes, that's fine. You okay. can have it start for June, probably June 1, because the semester for summer starts June 3rd. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh huh, uh huh. Ms. Smith, I have yes. one more question. Yes, ma'am. When we're um, looking at the, if we're doing split summer and I'm not advanced standing, do I not go under my mental and substance abuse category? Do I just go under foundation for split? Yes, you're just foundation. Just foundation. Do not, if you have not done your foundation pl placement, do not select that you're advanced mental health because I'm going to put you with an advanced mental health placement. Your foundation, just mark foundation. That's it. Thank you. Uh huh. Other questions? Okay. I think I answered them all, and I am on schedule by ahead of schedule by one minute. So, thank you guys for those of you that are still here. Thank you for sitting through. And those of you that joined us on Zoom, if you ask me a question via Zoom and you put it in the chat, I'm going to respond to you now. So if you want to hang out just a second, I'll try to respond to you in the order that you sent your, your question in. And just know, on, for those of you in Zoom, I will reply. I'm going to reply all because there may be other students with your same question, unless you ask me something personal, and then I will reply privately. That's it. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.